Um, I actually, um, I have a question. I want to start with a question. How many of you know about GitHub? Please raise your hand. Oh, like everybody. Uh, how many of you know about Git? Raise your hand. Oh, same? Oh, I'm surprised. Um, you know it's different, right? <laughs> uh, so th this is, um, so I don't know, maybe I'll go very quick on the first part. Um, I mean, I had a little bit of introduction. If Does anybody doesn't know what Git is? Maybe that's a better question. Please raise your hand. One, two, three. Oh, yeah, okay. So I'll, I'll do a little bit of introduction of what it is. So, so it's a version control system. So uh, what is a version control system? It's something that helps you control the source files you have in a project. So usually when you start a project, you have this file, you know, and then you improve it, you rename it, you want to keep history of it, and then it becomes insane, you know, everybody has gone through that. So, but version control, it's something you've experienced already. You know, if you've been editing, oh, oh, editing Wikipedia, uh, maybe you've checked the view history, and then you can see that you can go back in the history of the page and watch and have differences. Um, on the page you're visiting. Um, if you've used Etherpad, uh, the, uh, which is an online collaborative text editor, there is a slider where you can go back in time and review the whole editing of the page. And then if you used Photoshop, even back 15 years ago, you had history panel where you can go back in the editing of your, your, your design. Uh, so it's something you're used to, but all I showed here is very linear. It's a, like a, it's a history, but it's a linear history. Uh, so Git is different. Uh, Git is a, also a version control system, but that allows you to have concurrent versions. That means you can have work on multiple versions at the same time, which is called branching. And this is very interesting. Um, and then GitHub, uh, which is this online service, uh, has kind of popularized the use of Git among programmers, but also beyond that. Now, more and more designers uh, maybe uh, graphic designers involving web and so on, and, and beyond that too, are interested into using GitHub because GitHub has popularized it and also has kind of like made a secret sauce or a magic thing that got very, I mean, a lot of people interested into collaborating and understanding how Git works to collaborate. And so my goal, and this is something that I've been w having the back of my mind for uh, the past uh, couple of years, is how to uh, encourage designers to use version control systems such as Git to uh, um, encourage collaboration among designers and to help them and change their workflows so that collaboration can happen between them and also improve or yeah, adapt their workflow to function with this. Um, so three, three years ago, to LGM 2013, I was in Madrid, first LGM for me, and I was presenting a project I was going to build right after uh, at Interactivos in Madrid. Uh, which was called Design with Git. And uh, so Design with Git is this, um, no, that's not my mouse. Um, it's this, it's a proof of concept. I was, I wanted to like design an interface for uh, designers to have, um, to make sense of, of working with versions of, of, uh, of, of, of graphics. So in version controls uh, programs such as Git, for example, when you design something, you save it, then you change it, you save it again. But then you can compare the two versions, you know, and usually this is done with code, so it shows you this line of code has changed with this line of code. And there's nothing, or at that point in time, not much solutions uh, to have a visual uh, difference. But, uh, so I, I worked on this like SVG diff, well, because comparing version is called diffing uh, files. So, uh, so here I'm, I'm loading like a, a dummy repository I have on GitHub where I have three files and then I can compare the files and so here I have like a history of uh, the changes of my file. So somebody, I mean, first created the file and someone else changed it. And so I can compare the two versions just side by side or by having a slider to see, okay, then you know, that's the difference between my old version and the new one or just like quickly flip it or have a pixel diff um, viewer, so the pixel right on the right image, the pixel in red are the one that changed with the pixel from the previous image. And then you have here um, a, a diff, I mean, because SVG is code and it's XML code, you can see here in the XML of the file which are the parts of the file that has changed. Usually you, ha you don't have something like this for SVG on GitHub and other uh, 
version control uh, uh, visualization programs. So I worked on that. Oops, sorry. It's not supposed to be that. I worked on that uh, to, because I thought that was like a first step that would maybe encourage people or developers or other people to work with me on this and try to implement this in version control programs. Um, I was also naive about a bit about programming and about how things move. Um, and then after that experience and trying to polish it and trying to, to see how I could implement it in different things, I tried to like find re residencies where I could like focus time on building upon that. I tried to uh, contact developers from uh, GitLab, which is an open source version of uh, GitHub, um, and other programs to say, hey, listen, this is an, you know, an interesting direction. There's a demand. Uh, can we please work on this? And so I've been doing that for the past two years, like here and there, when I would see an opportunity, I would try to push um, where I could to get into that direction. But we're not much success. So uh, what happened is that last year I moved to a different country, and I don't have a work permit there, so I had more time. Uh, so I thought, okay, you know, let's spend more time you know, with that project. And, and so I thought, you know, I maybe need to do something else. And I've tried to push it in different direction, nothing works. So let's go back to the drawing board. So I thought, you know, maybe I should search what exists already. You know, I've been having these ideas, but maybe there's things existing. So, you know, searching. And then I found that when you Google or search or DuckDuckGo, whatever the, the word you want to use, um, for design and versioning, you find digital asset management software. Okay, and this is like huge software that usually, if you don't work in a 500 people company, you maybe you don't have access to, um, which is uh, helping like uh, f help build manage assets. You know, if you have, let's say, you, f you work in a photographing, uh, photography uh, agency and you have millions of photos and you need keep, to keep track of them, and, and then, then you have versioning for that. Um, also assets for like a video game development for uh, like, you know, Hollywood games, uh, type games. You know, we, they also employ like 200, 300 people that work on one game for four years. You know, they have to track every bit of texture and everything. So this is digital assets management. There's big players in there. You cannot access the software if you don't have at least 50 employees. So, I mean, it was a no-go. And I didn't want to go in that direction anyway. And the interface I was seeing in the software was not very interesting. Um, then there's Envision App and Pix.io, two products. Uh, which is actually more about interaction design in the context of software or application for phones and stuff. And they help you review designs. You know, it's like a, an interface to review design. So they also do versioning because, you know, the designer is going to work in the background uh, making multiple propositions, but there's not much more than this. I mean, it's very, it could be interesting for other things, but that's not what I was looking for. Then there's Gravit.io which was first an open source online application to edit illustrations. And now they closed it and they have now this kind of like social community for drawing illustration online where people can fork each other and fork each other's design and collaborate. I mean, it's interesting, but then it's again, it's closed and it's in this context of one application and that's not what I'm looking for. And then Layer Vault is more like they present themselves as the GitHub for designers. So it's very interesting, but they went bankrupt last year uh, they only existed for two years. Uh, I jumped in the game too late to actually test the application because nothing is available online anymore. That's what, with, what you have with online uh, applications that go bankrupt, is that they disappear. And, though, and so they had an interesting, I mean, an, an interesting approach, but couldn't test it. But they had a competitor called Pixel Apps, and it's a... Um, very nice website. I think I, mean, I was very surprised. It's really well made for designers. It really, like they say in their pitch, encourage collaboration. I mean, they have, they have the whole discourse, but the application is quite m well made with the right tools inside. It's a little bit over designed, I think, um, but, but it's really nice and it look, looked promising. The only thing is that they use Dropbox. So that's the thing. The, you know, if you want to share files among designers, they use Dropbox. But, I mean, for a good reason. A lot of designers use Dropbox. But this is a, this is not, I mean, a no-go if you really want to do versioning, because Dropbox is 
really crappy at versioning. If you upload your files, if you change them, they create versions of your file and they call it version one, which version two, version three. That's not really useful. And then because you don't know, I mean, yeah, you still have the dates, but. And then if you rename your file, you lose all your history. So don't trust Dropbox at all. And certainly don't trust them for versioning. Um, and a good thing or bad thing, I don't know, Pixel App got bought by Dropbox. So since a year, no more development, no communication, nothing. It's in the void. Interesting. Uh, and then, yeah. <laughs> them. Um, very interesting to study them. You know, they also do versioning. Um, their app is like a Dropbox clone, of course. Uh, it's very interesting. You have this sitting on your desktop. You think you're going to access your files through that or something, but they're actually just selling you stuff. Um, and then when you get online, uh, they got the, the, you know, they really manage Photoshop files and, you know, really nicely. I mean, you expect that from them. But then, you know, if you upload HTML or CSS or JavaScript file, it's a binary file for them. I mean, are you serious? I mean, you know, binary file. So they consider everything as an image. A doc file is also an image. A text file is an image. Everything is an image in the Adobe world. I mean, it's, they've got some things that are interesting and inspiring. But again, you don't want to trust them because that's written in small print. <laughs> so after 10 days, we delete the best version from the servers. So thank you. I mean, who wants to access work they've done more than 10 days ago? <laughs> Nobody, I guess, uh, at Adobe. Thanks, guys. So, next step. Why so many designers get on GitHub? I wanted to try to understand that. You know, If I want to build a GitHub for designers, the open source one, of course, um, why do they get on there? So I, I, I started like searching for Design files on GitHub, so media files. Have you tried searching for media files on GitHub? Who has? Nobody. It's impossible. <laughs> it's, it's, it's only, you can only search text. It's code. It's only code. So if the file name is referenced in text in code somewhere, yeah, you can find it. But if you're looking for anything, an image, it's impossible. There might be reasons, but... So I downloaded not all GitHub. It's 50 million projects. Uh, but I downloaded 1% of it. Thanks, Olivier. Olivier Meunier, if you see me, um, thank you for helping me doing this. So I downloaded reference of 500,000 projects to study the inside of it. That's a, around 130 million files, files. And the funny thing is that 10% of it is media files. And out of this 10% of it, most of it is PNGs, JPEGs, GIFs. There is 10% of that, which is SVG. That's very interesting. And then there is a that other group. And I want to interest in that other group because GitHub in the interface allows you to view these files and even do the diffing, a little bit of diffing, just a visual basic diffing, not very, not very efficient, but I mean, nice enough. So that other, I don't know if you can read it, but the top one is PDF. They also show PDF. So the top five, you can view it on the, the web interface. But then after that, there's TTF and WOFF. And so that's the, the most, I mean, the top most 10 uh, with OGG, which calls as a, comes as a fourth one, and the ICO file as a, as a fifth one there. So that's the 10 most used media files on, or available media files on GitHub. It's really funny because all of them are viewable in the browser. They only show five. Why? I mean, and funny thing is PSD is not more popular than TIFF, and AI, so Adobe Illustrator, is like way down at the bottom here, and then I'm also very pleased by that, and um, it's no more popular than STL. And STL files is 3D files for 3D printing, and GitHub is like so into it, they're like, you can view it, you can do diffing of STL file, it's at the bottom here. I mean, there's a whole lot of range of media files that are more interesting, but GitHub. And the funny thing also is GitHub is promoting the fact that font designers are, are, um, font designers are, uh, are using their application, but not, they're not really helping them. Hello, Dave. Uh, so tools. Um, there's tools available. On the server side, OK, you have GitHub, but don't use it because you can't download it. Uh, but there's GitLab and GOGS. 
So those are two projects, open source projects, that are available. You can install them on your server, and you'll have a GitHub clone with the same feature and all. Uh, and then there's Visual Culture. That's a very interesting project by OSP. Um, so Visual Culture is the tool for OSP to communicate to the outside and to encourage people to collaborate with them. And it's based on Git because they use Git as the core of the workflow, I would say. The only problem I had with it is that I tried to install it and to run it. It's very much uh, configured for their use of it. Uh, and I had a super hard time uh, getting that page, and I couldn't go beyond it. So, so it's, it's like, I would, and, and then also, there, I mean, I had a question, and I know there's a lot of OSP people here, is that, so GitHub is used, it's based on Git, but it's, it's giving more than Git, so it allows you also manage issues, uh, manage accounts, um, there's also like pages, um, so that means you can turn your project into quickly something like a, a web, web page uh, that, to, to present your project. So here, visual culture is kind of like the part of GitHub where you have the presentation side, the, the showing your project, and also the, 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 the Git side, but there's not the issue side and the, 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 the way to like create an account on it and start interacting with, with OSP. So that's also a bit um, lacking for me. So on the local side, so on your machine, when you use Git, you mainly have common line. That's what you have. I mean, I like it, but designers don't really like it. But on the other side, for designers, there's not much, because this is what you get as a GUI for, for Git. And that's really, I call it the Soyuz problem, you know? This is Soyuz, is a like Russian aircraft. I mean, the interface of a Russian aircraft, imagine a spacecraft. I mean, Git GUI is like this. I mean, th for designers, this is really hard. And this is like a small part of on the Git wiki about all the GUIs that exist. And there's as much GUIs as people dissatisfied with GUIs, I think. So uh, this is really, I've, tr I've tried to try them all, it's impossible. Uh, and then GitHub again, damn. They've done down the GitHub desktop, and actually it's quite good. Um, unfortunately, it's not open source, but they've kind of like managed to make it more like something pleasing for the eye and more pleasing for designers. I know designers who use it, and I'm glad because it's, it's at the moment still you can use it with any Git repo. So it's called GitHub Desktop, but you can use it with your local repo and other repos, and that's, so that's still a good thing. But we're lucky. We have great tools. The diff tool, uh, which I was trying to build, remember, uh, two years ago, uh, and it's called P4Merge and WebDiv. P4Merge is a freeware, um, a freeware, uh, and then WebDiv, I wanted to show WebDiv, but maybe I'll skip that if I have time at the end. So, the f no, I have to show it, I'm, <laughs> I'm at the end anyway. Uh, hold on a second, typing. Yeah, so see, you see the problem? This is like someone worked on an image, and then someone else worked on an image afterwards, spot the difference. <laughs> you know, you, as a designer, you would like to see, you know, what happened, what did I do six months ago? You know, and uh, there could be tools like uh, this. <coughs> you know, it compares pixels and then shows you, uh, this is the pixel that has changed. So WebDiff does that, but plus it does also the thing where um, it shows you differences in code. It's based on the web uh, interface, uh, so it uses web technologies. So it will show all the web files, you know, that GitHub doesn't want to show you, and all that. So it could be improved. Right now it's only doing images and code, but it's an open source project. P4 Merge is doing the same thing. It's a freeware by uh, one of these DAM thing, you know, Digital Asset Management. Uh, company, it's really funny because you can download it for free, and there's no end of user end user license agreement and everything. But but uh, that's another project. Of course, you can also like hook that to Git. So instead of typing the command I did, you said Git, web diff, and then 
you can do all the diffing tool in your history and whatever. So that's very uh, interesting, and uh, I think there's only a little bit of interface uh, design to do here to to uh, make it more uh, interesting in the future. And that's that's where I am, um, and that's where I'd like to get into a conversation with you. Is that um, on the local side? We have, sorry, we have a problem, is that we don't have a Git GUI that, um, that is easy and, and designed for designers to feel somehow at home. But we have web tools, um, uh, web diff, uh, which needs a little bit of inter you know, interface polishing you know, and, and certain things that could make it even better. But it's already a great tool to use in your workflow. I suggest you, you try it. Now on the server side, I'm totally lost there. You know, this is too much for me. Uh, there is GitLab, which is written in Ruby. I tried. I can't. Uh, Ruby, it's too, it's too much for me. Uh, Gox is written in Go. I don't even want to go down that road. Uh, and then <laughs> Visual Culture is uh, OSP. I mean, I, I need to. like it's, it's Python. I love Python. Django, I never use. OK, I can try to get into it. But then there's there is. It's so so grounded in your culture that that it's it's really hard to get into it and 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 you know it's also there's just things like can I detach it from you guys and you know there's this thing where it's kind of hard to to go, to know where to go uh, but if anyone here is interested I would be pleased to uh, go on with a discussion about this and see how we can push push things forward thank you. So that's the case of lots of work already done, but also still some to be done. Uh, so we take a few questions. Question. Yes. It, it just I won't say. F first, media is not only as. No. Um, so like because uh, we, that's a question, and we tried a lot of stuff, and that we have been asking for our own project, but it's really binary files, you know, XCF game files, and. Uh, and actually, if you find a solution, uh, I want it also, <laughs> because Git is cannot work for this. It's just because locally you you get incredibly big uh, repositories. Like you know, when we have one XCF file which is like 100 mega, then if you version it in the end, the same file will take gigas and gigas, and then you have thousands, hundreds of files. And so it's not really a question, but just saying that. It's yeah, it's really, it's also a question for me if you find uh, I'd be interested. Yeah, I, I think I mean I could talk a lot more. I mean I had to like redesign this talk like three times because there's also like all the workflow, how 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 Git can change the workflow and it has to change the workflow. It's, we can talk also about file types. Uh, I think there's a lot of like areas where we, where we can go to to um, to experiment. You know, because for me the goal is to. The way I see how GitHub works and, and these kind of applications is that people jump into projects because it looks like fun to jump into a project and and uh, of course you know this is cr we can criticize this attitude also I mean there's a good side and a bad side to this but um, but if we could have something in, in the design like this because there's icon designers font designers on GitHub and it's not the same thing when you go on a font design uh, repository on GitHub you go like you know what I mean? It's like it's missing something. So I think there's um, there, there's a, there's five type. I mean, five workflows to imagine also that could fit. You know, and and the tools that could fit. So yeah, versioning a video is going to be hard. Uh, versioning sound also, but maybe uh, other things are easier. That's why I started with SVG. So another question. Uh, a few more. Um, hi. Um, I would like. I'm curious actually to ask you two questions and. One concerns the reactions that you had at, in the first place when you uh, released the project and actually what was developers, designers uh, responding the response to, to, to the ideas that you were proposing. And the second is whether it, this is the time where graphic designers maybe should be open and embracing other kinds of interfaces and, and um, um, ways of working that don't involve necessarily uh, visual interfaces um, and 
what you think about that and uh, yeah because maybe it's perhaps more profitable to put our efforts there rather than to try to find a perfect app and a perfect interface for uh, uh, versioning uh, I, I think there's first question is there's a lot of uh, people interested uh, everybody's like oh that would be great you know even in if people are really into this, even in companies, I mean, it's a challenge for big business also, this thing. So it's not like just uh, small offices here and there. It's about, it's about the whole industry somehow, uh, if we can talk like this, sorry. Um, so th but, but, th but it seems to be like a f somehow everybody's waiting for it. Everybody, I, I mean, a lot of people have done things here and there, but then it's kind of like a, there's a waiting for the recipe that's going to keep out the whole thing somehow and then about interface I love common line so you got me there with you man but you know it's not there's only uh, not I mean there's visual people very visual people it's like programming you know when some people talk to me about talk to me about pure data or nodes and connecting nodes I'm like what do you do anything with this I mean I can't I like to write lines of codes but then some other people are the other way around. it's it's uh, I guess that's the way, you know, you got to know how your brain is wired and then from then on get it to, I mean, you can try other things, but then you know what works for you. So I'm trying to get as much people in the boat as possible. So, so one last question before lunch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot for the super presentation. And I, I, I really liked also to see a real overview of OCA because of all kinds of solutions from all kinds of different angles and whether they are open source or proprietary or hosted or local or but really trying to get a really overview of the problem. Um, so yeah, I, I'm from uh, OSP and it's true, you're completely right that you're saying um, uh, what you did, that we made something that was really tied to us. I, it would be nice if somebody would be able to untie it, oh, I guess, and we'd also tried once a fundraiser for that, sadly failed, uh, but to get Back into the, um, this question, I think you're, you talk about two different things, so the kind of like presenting a project and making it inviting and finding a workflow. And I think these are a bit different things because I think the workflow is, can be very dependent from a uh, uh, project, is really from the kind of design or the kind of media you're dealing or the kind of, of project you probably need to design a workflow that goes along with it. Whereas if you're talking about presenting, I think that's already, uh, and that's also the reason why with OSP we stuck to presenting and did not go <laughs> further to make a tool about workflow. When you talk about presenting, it's a bit easier step because if you say, for example, GitLab is open source. So if you say, we're gonna try and make GitLab show uh, all these media files from these uh, lists you showed, then I think that's like a, a, an attainable goal for, for, for next year's L LGM, and because there is a kind of meta interface with the file system that all these projects can maybe somehow uh, share. And then when it comes about workflow, I think then it, it's, it's time to be much more specific. And that's why also I found interesting the SVG uh, project, because you focus on a specific uh, format, maybe a specific workflow, maybe. So then it, I think it becomes a, a, a different uh, question or something. I guess that was not really a question, but a remark. No. But but this is this is why w where I am. I'm the same step as you, like confused between all these things. But I think that um, uh, to to respond to that, I think what I see on GitHub, for example, is like they've they've kind of like standardized the README file. That is the first thing you see when you come to see a project. I like that. I mean, because that's I think it's a key to get engagement from people. I think about workflow. Git has thousands of workflows. You can't. You can describe just one, um, and and that's why the, the tool here is kind of like a, a, a safe a safeguard somehow. You know, it's not it's always in the realm of this, but this is already like a huge thing. And then yeah, you were saying that your documentation is different and presentation is different than your workflow, but what I perceive from 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 your website is it's not clear, and on GitHub it's not clear either. So I think that's the magic of these tools now is that they've kind of like, w Git existed long before uh, GitHub, but then suddenly with GitHub, it becomes part of a, a, a system where you document, you promote, and, 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 people, and you invite people to join. And 
what I'm looking for is design project where you don't know who you're going to work with. And that's a very different workflow also. No. It's like, st from the start, I the don't know who I'm going to work with. design of the invitation, in a way. Yes. Okay. That's a good one. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thanks. Can I say like a different hat here? So I'm in charge also like communication uh, for the LGM. So um, there's two things. First, there's a hashtag. It's called LGM16. Uh, so please use it so it's easier to find what you post online. And then the second thing is if anyone is uh, like to write and like to you know talk about things, there is media like news, uh, like magazines, like Linux magazine and so on. I don't know if there's any journalists in, in, that's going to come over the weekend from the, these people, but they're, I mean, they're open to receive a benevolent contribution. Uh, so if someone feels like, you know, it's, it's kind of like a cool project to write about LGM and to be published in a paper magazine, uh, Please get in touch with me and and uh, and start like writing notes or do do your thing, and then we can we can arrange that. Uh, I'm sorry I won't be here this afternoon. I'm really sorry, but I'm lucky enough to have another event <laughs> in London. But I'll be here the rest of the weekend. Thank you. Thank you.